Let's talk about that bottle, uh, the note in the bottle, the, the Natalie Poverty Exchange, when Natalie finds the bottle uh, with the extortion advantage. How many of you are not just impressed with, but loving uh, the way Natalie still has her teeth in this game? <laughs> Her energy, her desire, not just to play, but to win, um, is very much consistent with the way Natalie lives life. And I know her a little outside the game. I've interacted with her and been different places across the country with her. And we tweet sometimes, uh, follow me at, at, at Hatch Richard on Twitter, anyway. Uh, Natalie will wake up and say, well, you know, how many barbells of how much weight am I going to lift today? And I'm like, well, dude, don't you even have a couch, girl? <laughs> she's, she's just a, a life-living um, woman, you know? She's got that spark. She's got that energy. She's got that go get em philosophy. Well, She's on edge of extinction, though. <laughs> That's supposed to suck the life out of you. That's supposed to drain you. Look at the other players, barely kind of upright. <laughs> but I don't know. It's, it's nice for me to watch the drive that uh, Natalie maintains. This is part of playing Survivor well. I don't care whether you actually have the energy or not. You know you're only there for a very, very, in the grand scheme of things, short time, limited amount of time. Yes, it feels like forever while you're in it, but allowing yourself to be drained and to um, be undermined or exhausted by the circumstances takes away from the reason you're there. And Natalie just doesn't seem to do it. You know, we've seen the tears. We've seen the, the emotion well up. You can't help that. We're human. Uh, great. <laughs> Let them out, whatever. And um, hopefully alone. And then shake it off and get back in it. Anyway, back to the bottle. Natalie's just got this drive. And here she is with poverty. And they find this extortion uh, uh, advantage. And I love their dynamic. You know, Natalie found the bottle and um, Parvati is helping her read it. They're walking around, they're, 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 Parvati's helping her think through where it might be. Parvati suggests that it's probably under uh, where people sleep at camp. Parvati even, because everybody at camp is dead and they just stay at camp the whole day, Parvati even plays kind of the distractor. And, and keeps people focused away from uh, where the, the, the camp under which the, the clue might be. And Natalie finds it under the camp. So Natalie found the bottle. Natalie finds the clue. Um, and it's Natalie's, right? Well, I don't know. The numbers weren't as clearly laid out in the episode to confidently say what happened they decided to extort Tony for six fire tokens. But did each of them take three? Did Natalie, because she found the bottle and got the clue, was it Natalie's and Parvati was just helping her? The benefit for Parvati is that Parvati is aware that Natalie just got those six tokens. Are those six of Natalie's tokens now added to how many tokens does Natalie have already? It doesn't seem over the course of Survivor and the years that the show has aired that those people who help people with a, uh, an advantage or finding it or in some ways, those helpers tend not to have had the benefits that the person who actually got it in hand, who found it, who whatever. Um, so it seems to me as if this, this might be Natalie's. And I'm just enthusiastic about her energy level and the way she plays the game. And at this point in the game, how pumped she still seems to be. With that many tokens, that much energy, wouldn't it be nice to see her pop back into the game? <laughs> Go Team Natalie for sure. But let's take a minute and think about the 
advantage. The advantage, this is a positive thing. The benefit here on Survivor, how many million viewers? Is you get to extort somebody. <laughs> In this case, a cop. And Tony's great, right? So he gets the note, he's thinking it through, and he's like, well, I don't get to do this in my real life. Oh, yay, he's thinking he gets to extort somebody until he gets to the end of the note and realizes it's being used against him. But what do you think about your kids? <laughs> hey, Ma, what's extortion? <laughs> you know, they're going to look it up. Uh, I think it's great. I'm not concerned about it. It's, again so so important to separate the game and the game's concept and rules and ways in which individuals play it from how ethical moral humans good members of society would choose to interact in the real world it's part of what makes survivor so wonderful so this is another uh, really great example i think of how I was misperceived in the early years. Well, I still am, <laughs> but who cares? Um, in this case, the idea of extorting someone is used in this interesting, positive way, and they bribe uh, Tony. <laughs> and it's great. It works. It's powerful. You see how compelling it is to make him pay almost whatever you want um, because you know how driven he is. <laughs> These aren't skills you really want to teach somebody to use in real life, but it's a great conversation, I think, to talk about what that is and what it looks like. And maybe even if, if this is you and your family around the dinner table, um, about what not to bring into the real world, about why it is uh, morally... Uh, and ethically wrong to try and extort people, never mind legally in most circumstances. Fun, fun thoughts. <laughs> Let's talk with Johnny about extortion. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> hey, <laughs> you miss my um, drooling over Ben? <laughs> I explained already. Now that I've seen his family, there isn't that same visceral attraction. <laughs> but he's still hot, right? Oh, that wife, she's a lucky woman. Uh, I do. I think Ben's a really, really hot guy. But let's look at Ben's hair trigger almost um, temper. There is a thing that's happening with Ben and has happened all along where Ben's reactions, his reactionary nature, the emotion underlying how he's receiving what he's being told or what he observes undermines his ability to play well or to move forward neutrally, at least. What do I mean by that? Ben just reacts sometimes in moments. In my recap this uh, episode, I talked about the way in which he battled Jeremy, trying to convince Jeremy that Jeremy was the more um, uh, threatening player. That Ben's not a threatening player. Jerry, you're more threatening. Ben doesn't have the uh, calmness down yet the way he should. Ben isn't able to take in information process it objectively and neutrally in ways that don't put him in jeopardy. And that's unfortunate. Because I think when it comes down to how you're perceived by the other players, much of that is integrated in those players' decisions if they are, if they are on the jury and you're at the end. So I think probably many of you notice it, feel it, and maybe if you haven't contemplated the impact of that kind of an emotional response, think about Ben in that way. Ben's a really good example of being ineffective 
in his emotional management. He has a ways to go to be able to um, control himself sufficiently to not undermine his ability to move forward. And I think we saw that several times in this episode. Ben lets his emotions get, get, get a hold of him. Not in some crazy, exaggerated, out of the uh, realm of reasonable way in which it's obvious um, you, you, just, you just don't like him or something like that, like a Hans might do. <coughs> but uh, still, the really skillful player will be more focused on how others perceive you than Ben has been and appears capable of being. Just a thought. There was a little comment Ben even made that I think, well, no, I know all of the players on this season could relate to because Ben said something to the effect of how fast the million goes as he just was um, kind of relaxedly engaged in conversation and... The point here, I think, is that, yes, everybody won a million who's playing this game. But a million's an enormous amount of money. And if someone didn't waste it or someone had more uh, discipline with respect to the way they used their winnings, it ha that kind of a comment saying, oh, I'm surprised how fast the, the million goes. So comfortably said, so um, easily moved on from, could impact the others. So, so, so if you are thinking, hey, I've done all I can, I know how much the million means to me and my family, and you are playing with someone who so casually talks about how quickly it goes, um, it's just a very, very subtle and a very small example of what I was talking about here. I mean, knowing or, or hyper-considering how whatever you say will impact or might impact those around you is the uh, backbone of the skillful survivor player. And I think this was a subtle little example of where Ben uh, was a little loose not just with his emotion here, but with the lack of it. <laughs> All part of the game, right? Right from season one, uh, there were people I've talked about who played the game, who wanted so badly to be famous or had these expectations that were really, really powerful and Tyson in this episode mentions the idea of getting close to the end and how your life may be affected thereafter. Think about that for a minute. Tyson used Adam as an example. And in the episode, you see Adam just staring up at the stars. And think about the energy and emotion with which you saw Adam play. To not win. To not get to the end, to be voted out, to be blindsided or not, to be, to be disappointed in any way with how you've proceeded in this game lingers for people in ways that are really, really impactful in their lives. And I thought it was really interesting for Tyson to have said that this episode, because in his saying it, I perceived his having wrestled with it already. I got the sense that Tyson would be okay, that Tyson understood as much as he wanted it, as, as, as invested as he is in his entire life with the show Survivor and how much he, he really wanted to win Survivor Winners at War. Even if he doesn't, he'll be okay. Somehow, in the way he, he worded this, there, there, there seemed to be a sense of acceptance and a sense of calmness with respect to whatever happens. 
but I thought it was insightful of him to point out that that's not the sense many other players leave with, and that indeed these other players will likely be very, very emotionally affected for quite some time thereafter, maybe always. And I think Adam may be really one of those. I think Adam may revisit and reprocess over and over and over what he did and how he did it. Hopefully not to the detriment of living happily, um, but I think that is a, um, a result, a part of what can happen when you play Survivor. It's such a big venue, such an, you are so exposed that, um, that it's tough not to go back and question your choices. You know, 80% of you who are listening to these videos have not subscribed to my channel. Please subscribe. Just hit the subscription button and hit the notification button and you'll be informed when I have another video up. For you to listen to. After you've subscribed, comment. Comment positively. Comment negatively. No holds barred. Just say what you're thinking. That's what will make our exchange even more valuable. As I'm able, I'll create new videos responsive to that commentary. So like away or dislike on that rare occasion you may feel the need to do so. <laughs> But either way, thank you.